What's going on, my friends? Wanted to shoot into a quick overview and review of the FollowSoft program. There are a few other options that guys are using in the industry, but to be honest, this is kind of the only legit one for residential snow removal. Everything else, like Root for Me or WorkWave or all these others, they're really made for service companies in general not for not, honestly not even for snow and not for especially not for residential snow there's some guys running things like you know um lmn and different landscape programs those are arguably the worst for snow i've heard service autopilot is complete trash honestly yeah i i haven't found anything comparable it's certainly far from perfect but they're working on it there's a lot of things i like about it i'll show you the few things i don't like but we have a fairly good relationship with them and i know they're constantly working to improve things so we won't be too hard on them and i'll just walk you through the program show you what it's about and give you my thoughts on it so without further ado here it is so as soon as you hop into the program, it's going to take you to this contract tab you see here. We can see all of your properties. These are all your driveways, obviously address, customer name, info here. This over here will be the route that they're on. And what's the easiest way to do this? Okay. So right when you launch on the program, like I said, you see contracts here. Here they are, obviously scroll through them page by page, whatever. Across here, you have all your different filters. So if you wanna see, I don't know why this is here, honestly, this program would be absolutely useless for lawns. I don't know why they did that. I'm very focused on, well, I'm just obsessed with focus in general. I'm gonna be pissed if they make this into a hodgepodge, you know, general program that does everything. If that's the case, we'll do something else. I don't think they're gonna do that. I'm sure there's just some people that for some reason want to run their everything off of this, but I, yeah, I would say do not run your lawn company off of this waste of your time. Don't even think about it. But anyway, that's just my opinion. Like I said, I hope they don't really pursue that because I hate just messy, you know, jack of all trades, worthless programs. Anyway, that's, that's not what this is yet. So moving on. You have your years, so you know if I wanted to look, for whatever reason, if I wanted to look three years back, no idea why I'd want to do that, but moving on. Good feature to have, I suppose, if you just want to check on, you know, maybe your previous pricing for a property or something like that, whatever, it doesn't matter. Status, so here we have all the different types of contracts that you would have, so like archived would be pretty much it's just deleted crap, like maybe you, accidentally duplicated a property or something there isn't really a delete for contract so pretty much it's just your trash bin is what archived is for some reason canceled obviously a customer that wasn't happy and you know they canceled whatever that's pretty self-explanatory oh we see we got a loading problem here renewal that will be okay um this i believe updates each uh, there's a certain date that it updates every year. I think after, uh, is it after April or it's, I don't even honestly remember. They choose a time. I think it's something or it's in like June or something completely out of the snow season. And what they'll do is, you know, every contract that was active for the year will automatically become a renewal. And then the fall, all your contracts that you had the year before have this yellow dot here, which means they're a renewal. And as customers pay and sign up you change them from renewal to active but i'll get a little bit more in that into that in a minute as you can see here yeah these are our renewals we only got like a hundred from last year that didn't sign up again so that's pretty good happy with that low percentage then you obviously have your active contracts so if you want to see just the ones that have signed up i don't know what renew i don't know what that is i'm I don't know why there's a renewal and renew. That one's kind of random. Disregard it. Follow up. This is a feature we don't really use. I guess if you were, you know, you create a uh, quotation here, which is an estimate. And I think it's if you, if you go somewhere in here, you can say that this customer needs a follow up. 
Uh, services needs estimate. I think it's honestly, I don't remember. I kind of talking on my ass here. Um, why is this customer only 175 bucks? By the way, that doesn't make it. I guess it's not a real customer. Strange. Okay, we don't charge 175 dollars to drive. So I don't know why I said that, but it's obviously not a confirmed real customer, so it doesn't matter. Moving on. So quotation, whatever. Call back another one. I don't know. I don't know. We don't use that. <laughs> Unsorted. Another random one. You're never going to use this. Honestly, as far as the filters goes, all you need to know is, yeah, archived is your trash bin. Forget it. Canceled if you want to know how many have been pissed off with you and got rid of the service. That's good to know. Renewal. That's important. Active, obviously the most important. The rest of this stuff, you're probably not going to use it, to be honest, guys. It's kind of useless. Um, but anyway, the essentials are there. If you go to flag here, this is where things get interesting. So you can also combine, you know, the status of the customer with other criteria. So if we go active and then we flag, you know, pickets to be installed, obviously we're almost done the season. So there aren't going to be any of those, but this is a pretty cool feature actually, because you can go down here and you say, you know, how many customers do I have that don't have an email address? Apparently I have 158. Okay. Um, and I mean, some of these will be, you know, customers with multiple properties and maybe the second property doesn't have an email address, whatever. It doesn't matter. Whatever criteria, missing payment, that's pretty important. Anyway, you'll, uh, no geocoding. Yeah. So some of these are more important than others. Obviously ones like no geocoding and no, and missing route are very important. And I'll get into why that is later, but a contract is pretty much worthless, obviously, if it's not on a route. And the geocode, I'll show you what that is in a minute. But some of those are useful, some of them aren't. But it's nice to have the options. So moving on. Location. That's actually a lie. The way I think of location would be like, you know, the location of the service. You know, we service multiple cities. So I, I thought that's what it would be. It's just obviously a shitty translation from French. It actually means, you know, the type of property. And so I don't really use this feature. We do residential, doesn't matter. But if you're doing both, be good. You can mark them between residential, commercial, all this stuff. Company, if you're running multiple brands for some reason, I know some Frenchmen do that uh, with the bigger companies. You can do that and run multiple companies from one. I know we will be using this more in the future. I'll tell you a little bit about that at some point. But anyway, service, you know, if you want to see your shoveling, unfortunately your shoveling, your ice melt, your whatever. So that's good. You can sort by that. Source, we use this when we purchased another company. Um, it's just, you know, where the customers came from. If you were to say import a bunch at once from purchasing another company that was already on Folosoft, for example, is what we did and they did that for us. Pretty niche thing. You're probably not going to use that. Manager, I, I have no idea what that's about, but we'll try and keep this moving here. So there's your contracts. Here's your clients and pretty much it's just going to take you to, it's going to show the customer up here. And then if they have, you know, say multiple properties, let's see if we can find one here. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but if the customer has multiple properties, it's going to show up, you know, a couple of these will be under this one. I guess all these new signups are one timers or one, one location per customer, but moving on. Here you have operation. You know what? Okay. Before I get too ahead of myself, let's go into the contract itself. And one thing to keep in mind, guys, there's different ways to access different parts of the program. So I don't want to confuse you too much, but if we go on, it's a pretty simple program. It's not that confusing. Like once you get into it, it's actually very, very straightforward. So I shouldn't even say that, but if you could hit this little pen thing here, we're gonna go into the contract itself. You can see the date that it was confirmed that this customer signed up. You can see the address here. You can see the year of service, that information, blah, 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 the route that it's on. Then you go here to occupant. So here is where you would add for the service alerts. So this person gets a call every time we go out with the alerts on. I'll also show you how to set that up uh, in another section of the program, but whatever form of communication the customer wants for their service alerts, whether that's a call, text, or email, you add that all in here. Typically they're going to be an email, but you know, some people like that extra level of attention. So we'll give it to them. 
Service it. Why is this driving so freaking cheap? Uh, I guess they must be whatever. Uh, prorated this late in the season. I don't know. This is pissing me off, but uh, whatever. doesn't matter. Most of our drivers aren't this cheap. Discounts. You're not probably going to use this because you're just going to, if it's a cheaper driveway, you're probably just going to give it a cheaper price here. But I guess if you wanted to say, you know, keep all your pricing consistent and then for a certain customer at a discount here, you could do that. We've played with that on occasion, but typically it's not really an essential thing. Payments here, um, you can record whenever the customer pays, type of payment, the date, obviously, and that's that. If it's multiple payments, you know, say if you have a four payment program like we do, you'll have to record them all here, and that's that. Notes for the different services. So this is, you know, pretty much your internal notes and then everything else will show up on the specific routes. If the customer's really pissy and, you know, something's happened multiple times and they want to make sure it doesn't happen again, you can make it, give it a red background for importance that shows up on the tablets. Dispatch, this is a worthless feature, meaningless. I don't even know what it's supposed to do. Um, maybe in the future it's going to do something, but right now it's, it's useless. Geocoding, this is very important. So all of your properties, wow, this isn't a weird location. I guess this must be a new subdivision. Anyway, um, okay, as you can see here are our other geocodes, all these blue ones. So every property that you service is going to have this square drawn around it. And as you can see, this one's already drawn, but if I wanted to change it, make it bigger, be, 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 whatever. And how we typically draw them is if you look, this is a very new area of town, so not really good not really a good example to show you it's a total mess here um let's see if we can go somewhere else a little more neater as you can see here how we like to draw them so you can do either as you can see we're on satellite here or you can go map keeps it clean wow this is this is a terrible area to show you guys okay i guess here's one i like to draw them all the way around the house and then you want to draw them halfway onto the street and the reason for that is if you're doing plow ends, it won't register the tractor if you don't do that. And so I'll show you on the tablet as well how this works. But whenever you enter the geocode, it's going to go from on the tablet, the, the square isn't blue, it's actually yellow, and it'll automatically turn to green. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like exactly. But this is kind of the back end setup for the geocoding. So very important that you make sure every property has a geocode. Without it, it's not going to show up on the route and it might as well not be in the system. So you can't forget that. And then here, if you go to visits, okay, I guess this customer is brand new and they've only seen one visit so far. So great. Okay. And uh, the reason this can be valuable is, you know, somebody claims you didn't show up, you blah, 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 blah. You can go, hey, no, uh, based on our GPS tracking, we showed up at this time on this date, whatever. Okay, so that is your contracts there. Now, moving on, you can go to, like I already showed you, clients. When we go to operations here, operations doesn't actually take you anywhere. It just gives you this little drop down. You go to map. Okay, and so here is where you see all of your routes. And here's Stratford. We have two locations running it basically as one. Here's my other location. Every route has a different color. So if we click on, let's see here. Matt's route here. Just double click that. You can see, sorry, starts every time it snows. Do, 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 whatever. And so how this works is you have to manually draw this out. And so it takes a little bit of setup the first time you do it because, um, okay, it's a little bit, I'm not going to go too much into detail on this. You guys can kind of figure it out on your own, but when you first get on the program, you input all your customers and then all these geocodes are going to be uh, unclaimed essentially. They're going to have no root and there's going to be no lines anywhere. So to draw these lines, you hit this little pencil here and you just drag these dots around and you follow the road. I'm pretty meticulous with it. I like it nice and tight to the road, looking good. And then basically you, 
it, it's not a root optimization software. It really just makes you draw your own. And so you kind of have to think it through a lot. This is one of my favorite jobs. I enjoy drawing the roots, so I still do it. I probably shouldn't. I'm going to delegate that, but I enjoy it so much. It's kind of like a video game, so I don't play video games. Those are for losers, but this is my version of a video game. Uh, you can see it's, it's pretty good root here. A lot of turnarounds, it's a little twisty, but good density. You know, you're going to have to go up and back the streets sometimes and a little bit of craziness. This one has quite a bit of that, but it is what it is. It's all part of the game. And so each time you add a property to the root, one thing to keep in mind is you want to have one of these little dots in each geocode. If not, it will give you a warning. So if I take that out, uh, see, it's going to give me that little warning and it's not going to be on the root. Let's fix that. Boom, okay, that's fixed up. Okay, moving on. Dispatch here, this is a worthless feature. Uh, maybe in the future it's gonna do something. For now, disregard it. Whatever it's supposed to do, it doesn't work, so don't even think about it. Man, uh, broadcast, I don't really know what this is about. Uh, this is another worthless feature. Maybe in the future it'll do something. Conf I don't even know what the config, I don't know, worthless. Uh, devices. I guess this is all your tablets. Why it shows this, I don't know. Um, another worthless feature as of yet in the future, I'm sure it'll be something, but so far disregard these. Roots. So this is where you're going to create the root uh, so that it shows up on that map that I just showed you. So, you know, let's say we add another tractor. We're gonna go add root whether it's tractor shoveling whatever the stuff is you name it that's that services this is where you're you show you know which ones are turned on which ones are turned off um and these would be like um it, this just determines what's going to show up in the map from your service drop down if that makes any sense it's a little bit hard you'll know what i mean once you get in the program it doesn't really matter um Users, just everybody who has access to a tablet. So whenever you hire somebody, you just go here, add their information. Their PIN, we keep it simple and usually just do their, the last four digits of their phone number. Uh, and then that's, that's for your login, pretty simple. Reports, uh, this one can be kind of useful if you wanna see you know, how many, you know, tracking your, well, there's other ways to find as well, but you know, if you want to report, say, on how many driveways canceled this year, or, you know, how many unhappy customers you have, or um, you know, how many prepaid versus did the payment plan, or things like that. There's a lot of different reports you can you can draw. So if you go to generator here, you know, you can do a million things based on this year. I want to know active. I don't know for whatever you know no email i know how many people didn't have an email and then you can make a route or, or uh, sorry make a report or you can do it for whatever you can do whatever the heck you want here so this this is pretty useful uh, i use this feature on occasion if i'm just trying to get a, a certain metric this is new i didn't know about this renewal okay so this is going to show you uh year over year you know how many you had renew on certain weeks so i guess that that's good to know uh, yeah stats I haven't seen this before let's see follow up hmm interesting uh, I guess this is just in general uh, active right now whatever okay this is a cool new feature I haven't seen this before cool I, uh, I don't have much to say on this because this is oh cool it's kind of like a profit and loss thing it shows you and shit okay I like that didn't know it existed, but I guess you can play with that yourself. Moving on. Now this, these are new features here. I haven't seen any of this stuff. I guess I should spend more time in this, but they've been updating it, guys. So constant improvements on the program, uh, which is which is what I like. Um, let's see. Anyway, I won't, I won't take too much travel. I don't know what this is about. Hmm. Let's see what this does here. Nick Ross. Oh, this is cool. I, I don't know what this is, honestly. Um, let's go back a little bit. I'm learning with you. 
Let's see. Show. What does this do? Okay, it doesn't work. All right, maybe this feature is coming because it doesn't work right now. Anyway, that's pretty much it, guys. Support here, I don't ever use this. The last time I checked, it was pretty much all in French. Maybe they're doing some English stuff now, but... Dans la présente vidéo, vous apprendrez yeah, comment video, utiliser... Whatever. Frenchman stuff. Uh, not going to be the most useful to you if you're an uh, Anglais like myself. Pretty much disregard... Oh, this is cool. What the... So yeah, disregard the support unless... Well, check it out if you want, but I haven't used it too much. This is kind of cool. So I guess this shows the tractor's movement. What the, oh, I guess this guy forgot to turn off his tablet, so it showed him driving home. I guess I know where he lives now. Interesting. But anyway, this shows his movement through the route, so I guess that's what all these red dots are. Makes sense that he followed his route. I would, I would expect uh, nothing less. And that's pretty much it for this, guys. So I'll show you on the tablet as well how it works that's more the bread and butter of you know what your operators are going to be seeing this is the back end for you know yourself or your admin people overall it does everything i ask it to you know it's not okay if we go to some of these features like i said like broadcasts completely useless you have to use external programs for different things like sending out your email uh, like your mass emails or you're, this is not an accounting software by any means, guys. Like you're gonna need your QuickBooks Online. You're gonna need Mailchimp, like I said, for you know sending out your mass emails. You're gonna need you're gonna need various other programs. So I can't really hold that against them. Uh, it's pretty much a routing software, and that's what it is. And that's great. That's that's all I really needed to do. But don't expect you're gonna run your entire company out of this thing. And keep in mind, just because a feature is available on it doesn't mean it really works. I mean, they're they're building the the back end of it, and you know, just setting up that foundation for future growth. So um, I won't say too much about that, but I would say for now, um, unless any major updates come out between now and next snow season, bet on using it for your routing. Very useful tool for that. Great for running through the routes. Um, but much more than that, eh, it's not going to do it. Like, this is not a, you know, Salesforce CRM system that's going to help with your workflow of whatever the heck. It's it's a glorified routing system, which is all, all I need it to be. So, with all that said, I'm pretty happy with it overall. There is nothing comparable. So even if I have any gripes with it, at this point, doesn't really matter because it's what we have to work with. So with all that to say, let's move on to the tablets themselves.